Hey YouTubers and current subscribers, it's uh, Nick here again and today we're just going to continue on with the Iron Man theme. Um, this is the second video I've put out uh, in regards to Iron Man. The first one was uh, Iron Man Mark 1 and we just went over him and how great he was. We're just going to have a look now at Iron Man Mark 3. Uh, again, want to try to be detailed in these reviews, but not go over the top. Just be, you know, try to be as informative and entertaining as I can. And we'll have a look at all the features. So, let's get stuck into it. Uh, this guy, like I said, is Iron Man Mark III. The classic gold and crimson armor. This was Iron Man's um, final suit he wore in the movie and I reckon it looks pretty cool love the whole color scheme I think it's great um, however my particular figure has got a few flaws um, like if you can see here on his hand just bring it up close that there yeah that's pretty badly sort of beat up I have no idea how it happened but it looks just sort of like the plastics either melted and the paint sort of rubbed away but Anyway, we'll just ignore that because I'm sure you guys have got perfect figures. Um, now, let's have a look at the articulation. The head's on a ball joint. Uh, I've seen a few people rip their action figure Iron Man's head off to expose this ball. Uh, the head forms a socket and, yeah, they've got this ball on the, the neck. Uh, I'm not going to do that because... I just don't want to wreck my figure if something happens. But, yeah, he's... You can see it obviously because it's a ball and socket movement, it'll just spin all the way around. Um, uh, you can, he's sort of. Oh, okay, I've popped it off anyway. Alright, okay, so it's not broken. <laughs> um, yeah, he can look up a little bit before the head pops up, pops off, uh, but it's sort of fairly limited, so you're not going to get a whole, not going to get a really cool. Um, look out of him when you're trying to make him fly around um, shoulders, ball and socket ball and socket set up, it's just the the hinge and swivel uh, the hips, same sort of movement, you get a little bit of movement here the upper body sort of swings around which I think is quite good, I like it um, the knees, there's actually um, two attachments as you can see there um, just affords that extra little bit of movement and I think this little um, plate here, the, the knee plate part of his armour, I think that adds a nice bit of character to it anyway so it doesn't look silly, I think it's really good and you've also got um, yeah, um, the hinge and swivel ankle as well that also affords the movement um, of a ball and socket joint so you've got a little bit of pronation there the knee actually doesn't offer any pronation so it can't turn in but obviously because of the way the hips um, set up you can sort of yeah turn it in and out I think it's it offers a fair fair bit of movement now I just want to quickly talk about the paintwork um, I'm not sure whether you guys can tell or not I'll see if I can bring him up close focuses, yeah that's focused pretty well I'm not sure whether you guys can tell but I've actually touched him up a little bit with some of the Citadel miniatures paint um, if you can't tell it's because I'm pretty subtle and that's always the way to go if you're gonna touch up a figure make sure it's subtle unless obviously you're doing a complete repaint which it's not going to be subtle but yeah I've just added some um, some gold just along um, the ridges on his mask um, and just on his cheeks uh, it's a bit hard to see on the video but yeah just up along there on the ridges and then just around his mouth there's a little bit there and some on his bicep as well basically wherever there was gold I just added a little bit of colour there too um, in some places I had to touch up a little bit of bad paintwork 
um, whether it had chipped off out of the mould and you know there's a loose piece that was painted over and the loose piece then fell off and a bit of red was exposed I just touched it up a little uh, one thing I noticed um, this gold paint on this back was actually sort of a bronze coloured um, paint they used um, which wasn't consistent with the rest of it I'm not sure what it's supposed to be like that but I mean it doesn't really matter I just sort of pointed out um, the crimson it looks fantastic for uh, for an action figure that's worth you know 17 Australian dollars I think it's really good value it's probably the best action figure I've bought in a long time um, maybe it's just because of the way Iron Man is and he just would make you know, I think he's always made um, good figures you know because um, he's a sort of just the way he is, he's like a big metal suit, I think it makes a really good action figure. But yeah, he looks phenomenal, I think he looks really good. Um, I'm not sure about his, um, uh, what's it called? The, or the centre chest piece, of the arc thing or whatever it's called. Um, that could have been maybe a slightly brighter, or they could have used um, like a, a piece of translucent plastic. Um, you know, like a a light light blue or something like that, just to sort of make it real shiny. That would have looked alright. Um, I was I'll just bring them closer again too. Just have a look at those eyes. I was really really impressed with the the paintwork on the eyes. I was really happy with that. Um, wonderful. Okay, let's just continue on. I'll hurry up with this. Okay, that's his gun. That is his um, launching repulsor blast. Never had any of these features in the movie. It was basically just like that, but I suppose Hasbro went well. We kind of need to um, put some accessories in there, make him a little bit cooler. So they've done this, and of course, there's like a little. You press that, and it comes out, and shoots the giant snot wad. And, um, whatever it's okay it's not the coolest weapon in the world but I mean it's a nice little accessory and I'm more than happy for him to have it and that just clips onto his um, upper arm now these shoulder pads come off too they're all cool um, hard plastic so they're pretty durable uh, if you move his arm around too much they'll pop off but they're very easy to go back on um, what else was I going to say? He's got great posability, obviously because of his articulation. Um, you'll find too, you'll have to um, move these uh, these little balls where, he's, uh, where his thigh attaches to his hip to get him to move his leg inwards. If you don't have that ball in a certain position, um, he just won't do it. So, um, yeah, like in that position there with with his right leg that's just not going in any further you've actually got to align it so this the shiny bit of the plastic there is facing the outwards swing the thigh around and then it'll actually go and you've just got to have that whoops you've just got to have that ball so you can you should be able to see it this little piece here that's where the actual uh, the articulation is so that's that affords it sliding up and down so you'll be able to push it closer together all right the video is running pretty long so i'm going to end it here and out of um five repulsive blasts i'll give this one five as well i think it's a wonderful figure just like iron man mark one like i said it's one of the better figures i've bought in a long time uh with exception of transformers i have a love of transformers all transformers toys um, I'll put them, obviously you can't get any better than 5 Repulsor Blast, so he's on equal terms with the Transformers. Um, now, I better end it here, I'll do another video on the packaging, because I think it, even if it's only a, a one minute video, whatever, I'll pop it on. But until then, I hope you've enjoyed this video, if you think it's shit, let me know, um, and I'll get rid of it and maybe put another one up, but hopefully get some entertainment value out of it, and um, I'll talk to you guys very shortly, take care.